Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but this morning you're getting a pop quiz. Oh no, yes. Well, that's what you used to say in school too. I, I know. Well, don't worry because this, this won't affect your semester grade. All right. All right, uh, Donna, can we uh, put up the first slide? Thank you. What country does this remind you of? Anybody? What? What? What, what does, yeah, when you see the Statue of Liberty, what country do you think of? The United States. Those of you who said France, you were, that, that's where they got it from. Yes, okay. Uh, Donna, put up the answer. There is Statue of Liberty. All right. Now, how about this one? Yeah, you, you were, you were going to say uh, Las Vegas or something else. I don't know. Okay. All right. <laughs> the Eiffel Tower, Paris. All right. How about this one? This may be a little more difficult. Anybody? Can't hear you. Right. Where? Put up the answer. You're right. Mount Fuji, Japan. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. What country does this remind you of? Come on, you clergy who are here. All right, let's put up the answer then. The vine is Israel. Israel is the vine. Okay, now, what's our next slide done? Psalm 80, verse 8. You brought a vine out of Egypt, you drove out the nations and planted it. Throughout scripture, Israel is described as the vine. Next passage, Isaiah. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. Another one, Hosea. Israel is a luxuriant vine that yields its fruit. The more his fruit increased, the more altars he built. As his country improved, he improved his pillars. This is all wonderful, isn't it? Let's go to the next one. Jeremiah, yet I planted you as a choice vine from the purest stock. How then did you turn degenerate and become a wild vine? Things are kind of changing here. Everything was wonderful for a while and now it's not so good. Ezekiel, therefore, thus says the Lord God, like the wood of the vine among the trees of the forest, which I have given to the fire for fuel, so I will give up the inhabitants of Jerusalem. That's uh, pretty strong stuff, isn't it? Next slide, please. That's it? No, you've got more than that, haven't you? Oh, I thought I just read this one. No? Oh. Oh, there's more to the passage. Ah, thank you. You know, Donna writes all my sermons, and I, I don't rehearse them well. Okay. Let's get to, uh, what it, would it be verse 7, 8, whatever. This is it? Okay. I will set my face against them, although they escaped from the fire. <laughs> I'm having a good time, I hope you are. <laughs> the fire shall still consume them and you shall know that I am the Lord when I set my face against them. It's still, it's still lingering. One more? Oh, thank you, Donna. Next, next time I'm to preach, I'll tell you what, I'll do that and you do this up here. And I will make the land desolate because they have acted faithlessly, says the Lord God. Is that, is that it now? Okay, we got one more? Ah, I am the true vine. Okay. This, this is where I think it gets interesting. If Israel is the vine, and if scripture refers to Israel as the vine, and Jesus comes along and says, I am the true vine. What is he saying? 
He's saying, I am the true Israel. Now, you can see why the authorities would be a little upset with that. How can this upstart preacher come along, this carpenter turned itinerant preacher, how can he come along and say, I am the true Israel? We got to get rid of him. We got to get him out of here before he causes any more trouble. Okay, so the question I have is this. How did Jesus get from being the son of Mary and Joseph, <laughs> the carpenter, how did he get to the point of saying, I am the true vine? Well, I think it all started when he was in the desert. You recall that story where Satan comes to him. Jesus is trying to sort out his mission. How am I going to do what my father has sent me to do with these people. And Satan comes along and says, hey, that's easy, feed them. Churches today carry on that tradition. If, if we feed you, you will come. <laughs> but, but Jesus rejected that, said, no, 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 no. We live not by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And Satan says, well, you don't like that, I got another offer for you. <laughs> All we have to do is go to the temple, you jump off, you won't even stub your toe. In fact, scripture says that, you won't stub your toe. And the people will be amazed because they can't do that without killing themselves. Well, Jesus rejects that. And he said, you are not to tempt the Lord your God. So Satan says, well, all right, look at it this way. I've got power, you've got power, we'll put it together. We'll make a political alliance and we'll take over the whole world. And Jesus says, uh-uh, no, we are to serve God and serve him only. And as he thought of that word serve, he remembered the suffering servant in Isaiah, that Israel was described not only as a vine, but as a suffering servant, a servant of the world, one that was willing to give its life if need be. And he said, that is the model for my ministry. And so he lived his life serving. We know he suffered and he died. But before that happened, he said to his disciples, I am giving you this assignment. I want you to go into all of the world. I want you to baptize. I want you to teach them what I have taught you. In other words, I'm not going to be here, but somebody needs to carry on my work. And he gave it to the disciples. And he gave it to us, because we are the modern counterparts of the disciples of old. I love, well, that's strong, but I think I can say I love the mission statement of the Church of the Brethren. It is very simple, very short, right to the point, you can remember it. They say that their mission is continuing the work of Jesus. How much simpler can it be? That is the mission that was given to the disciples, and that was the mission that was given to us, to continue the work of Jesus. We are to be his hands and his feet and his voice in this world. Now, how do you do that? Well, we've got a free little pantry out here. Uh, we have Sunday school. We do it in a variety of ways. We reach out to the community. We reach within the congregation. But if you had to summarize the whole thing, and our texts today kind of do that, there are two commandments, love God and love one another. Jesus said to his disciples, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. In our text today, it talks about the vine, it talks about being connected, it talks about bearing fruit. How do you do that? You bear fruit by loving one another, by loving the world, by loving those around you, by serving and helping, and as Luther said, being little Christs. Our mission is to continue the work of Jesus. Amen.